So good morning, active traders, and welcome to our trading week ahead live broadcast coming at you live on Saturday, Friday, the 27th of March. Uh, I'm sorry, Saturday, the 27th of February. It's It's been a long week trying to keep track of things. Anyway, uh, brought to you from our trading the open live room. Uh, great to see so many new faces here in today's broadcast. Let's take a look at the markets and see where things are telling us they're headed next. You see, the biotech sector has been weaker than the semiconductor sector, and they're both down in combination with their S&P being down. Broad market had an especially weak day on Thursday, a little bit of a mixed choppy day yesterday, but still closing down for the week. So we've had a two-week downtrend in the S&P, and the trend is your friend until it's not. If you remember last year, last year we had a selling end of February that led to a big drop in March. So far, it looks like we may be on the same trajectory. Uh, it's important to stay attention, pay attention to which of the charts have the best volatility, and importantly, where's the sectors? Uh, we've got volatility in different markets, whether it's the S&P, the Dow, the Russell, the NASDAQ. Some of them are stronger and others are weaker than others, and you want to pay attention to where the next play in the market's going to be. So one thing I want us all to pay careful attention to is the VIX chart. Now the VIX breaking 26 was the key technical signal I was visually looking for last week, and we got it initially there on Tuesday a little bit, it spiked up, but especially on Thursday, we had a substantial drop in the stock markets and our VIX obviously popped up over 26. That's the 200 SMA line here on the six month, and you can see we're still up over 26. Anywhere over 24, 25 is a bearish start of a market. If the what you want to pay attention to, what this means to you as a trader is, visually pay attention to where the volatility index is day over day next week. And as long as we stay over 26, the most valuable thing I'll tell you today, uh, keep an eye on the VIX. If it stays over 26, you want to maintain a short bias in the market and you do not want to buy equities unless you've got an especially strong, compelling case or reason to do so. It's probably a smarter idea to be playing around with some of the inverse instruments. And we're gonna take a look at those coming right out. First thing I want you to look at is, let's do a day traders look at relative strength of the inverses. So what you're looking at now is a two day chart of the short Dow ETF as Dow. And I'm long this one as I am all these inverses, because I like to buy things that go up when the market goes down. Uh, one thing that I want you to pay attention to, to gauge or to assess the relative strength or weakness of markets, uh, even if you don't trade these like I do, at least pay attention to uh, the inverse instruments. And there's many of them to trade. I trade along all of these. But you can see, for example, the Dow was shorter than, let's say, the Russell, right? The chart pattern of the S Dow is a stronger breakout pattern because it held the two-day high up there and closed near the two-day high. So that means that they're shorting the Dow more so than they're shorting, for example, the NASDAQ because this is the SQs and you can see it did a really good move up for us on Thursday. They kind of chopped and dropped yesterday. So they're not shorting technology as much because it has relative strength. So when it comes to what's worth trading next week, you want to pay attention to charts that are always in a two-day high breakout continuation. Like this one, FAZ, this is the finance, triple leveraged inverse. This goes down when, uh, this goes up when banking goes down and vice versa. So the main point is, first of all, become familiar with the inverse instruments. Uh, my live room is a great place to do that because we cover them daily, at least the strongest two or three. So what's the trend? What's going on? Should we be short technology? Indeterminate. How about the Russell? If it takes out five, right? The TZA is our small cap inverse. Our volatility one is surprisingly kind of the weakest of the bunch with UVXY. After a nice spectacular run up, I called this long for my room members here at 8.45. And then I'd started trading it even pre earlier than that in the pre-market, but I correctly called UVXY long for my live room members at $8.45 a share. 
and it skyrocketed up a couple of dollars. So congrats to anyone who was trading that. UVXY was good. Another one that is looking even better is dust. And this is our gold inverse. This one goes up. It's the gold miners bear double. So basically uh, when gold goes down, uh, this instrument goes up and dust has lots of upside. So if they keep selling dust, I always want to pay attention to commodities, at least oil and gold. Uh, Oil's been volatile and so is gold. Right now, I like the uh, the odds of shorting gold because uh, the dust has gone up so so sharply lately. Now let's take a look at the daily charts. Our swing trading charts. I'm gonna start with UVXY. Let's uh, last March. Remember, this is, <laughs> history may repeat itself. And look at the profit potential in the inverses if this does a repeat of last March. Not saying it's going to go to 100 a share, but at $10 a share with a nice hefty bounce on Thursday, maybe a good play coming up. The inverses all have similar chart patterns. Kind of a visual. Poker tell is we had one year high volume in UVXY uh, day before yesterday on Thursday. I trade UVXY daily, so I know it like the back of my hand uh, pretty much. And we're going to use every whole number's resistance. I'm going to scale in uh, over 10 again, come Monday again, uh, over 11, 12, 13, and so forth. But anyway, this one, this one has lots of upside. The pivot signal is always to look at volume because volume. Large volume combines both short squeeze uh, volatility along with speculative long buyers like myself. So people who have been short this get squeezed, kind of like the GameStop squeeze, right? They, they short it, and then once it starts to pivot, everyone who's short needs to cover their shorts. When you see an especially large volume pivot day, that's a sign that you've got a short squeeze or a short reversal. Uh, shorts are getting squeezed, and so buyers are coming in. So there may be plenty of upside in UVXY. Now you really want to pay attention to a couple of these. S triple Q, the NASDAQ is also also especially strong. Now it had a six month high volume just yesterday. So a lot of people were shorting the NASDAQ with SQs. And it's also in an up an uptick and uptrend here lately. But no especially large green candles. We got Tiza, it's got lots of upside with a large volume bounce on Friday and Thursday. And the finance one really got knocked down and it's turning to bounce. Another one to pay attention to that I trade is LabD or Biotech Inverse. What you wanna look for Ideally, when you're looking for pivots, you want to look for ones that have the biggest profit potential and the most consistent pattern of buying over the last week or two. So you don't want to catch a falling knife or dead cat bounce, but if something does start to pivot on large volume and you've seen, if not a consolidation, a recovery uptrend like we've seen in all these inverses, uh, and it's on the heels of a really big point drop, which they've all been dropping this past since March, uh, there's lots of upside potential in all the inverses if, as is widely expected, the market continues to get some sell pressure next week. Let me ask a quick question. How many of you are currently thinking of or trading inverses, either day or swing trading? UVXY was the number one most active traded instrument in the entire stock market, more active than all stocks and all other ETFs on Thursday because obviously it had really good upside. UVXY did over 250 million shares of volume on Thursday. And if you take a look at the daily chart, you can see why. Look at this, million shares at a time. This was the most active instrument traded on Thursday. I check on my Fidelity leaderboard, the most actives, and this was the most active. VXX and SQQ are also in the top five. So professional traders in the know 
know to trade instruments like this when the market drops. Now, I'm an expert in trading these. I've traded these thousands of times. I've got lots of real money experience trading them. And you may want to join my live room at Trading the Open uh, to get a heads up on not only live alerts like my 845 long trigger for UVXY, get my members back here, uh, but what's next as the market drops. Hey, a lot of you. Okay, thanks, Trey, Phil. Hey, Mick. Hey, Ian. Hey, Usan. Hey, Angel. Hey, Richard. <laughs> hey, Mick. Chris says he's in UVXY. And good point from Chris. Yeah, energy was up lately. I liked Occidental Petroleum and Apache, OXY and APA, a couple of oil uh, kind of energy-ish energy uh, type instruments to the upside. But if we take a look at what's really been volatile lately, you know, we've got these up and down charts. Sometimes these random gap charts <clears throat> pay off and sometimes they just drop and chop, right? This guy had been, KOSS had been almost $40 a share on Thursday morning, and now it's $16 a share. By the way, this is a really good example of the kind of charts that would be really risky and dangerous to swing trade. You don't, you do not want to trade instruments with two to one, you know, type price action for swing trades, because those could really go against you large, which one for swing trades are steady uptrenders. Things like this are fine for day trading, like RKT ran from 21 to 24 yesterday, then back down to 22, and then went sideways the rest of the session. Terry, I called a long starting 24 and a half, and I said to exit the 25 and a half yesterday. One more many uh, cannabis sector stocks, but the cannabis, I don't, I don't think I want to get back into them right just as of yet. The reason is because they'd run up so far and they're crashing back down and they still have lots of room to the downside. So if the market drops, I will be reacquiring cannabis shares. I've been scaling out of them on the way down this past week. But if you look at some of them, this one is a Tilray going from 10 to 60, then back down to 25. It still has a region here of potential selling pressure. So I will be scaling into Tilray if it gets back over 30. And you may want to adopt that strategy. Again, paper trading use only. I'm not making trading recommendations, but at least what I'm going to do is uh, the cannabis sector, uh, metals, silver, and uh, copper have been especially strong. Uh, energy and oil have had good volatility. Uh, you want to really be selective if you're going to bottom fish or, or play any instruments within beaten down sectors. It's probably better to stay clear. I'm going to be mostly cash. Next week is probably a, a better week for day trading or very short term two or three day swing trading than it is for week or two long swing trades because with the market volatility the way it is, things go up and they come right back down again. Here is one of my favorites, Aurora Cannabis. It came off a low of $4 a share going up to 19 a share. Now it's back down in the middle here at 10. Let's take a look at a couple other charts. One of my other favorites is uh, Afria, APHA. Now with a chart like this, it has danger written all over it. If you're swing trading this, and I still have a few shares on, uh, but not much because I think it may well drop further. If you're currently swing trading APHA, where would you trail a stop? I'm just curious. Type in a number. I'm curious to see what you folks say. Where would you trail a stop if you're long here and saying, uh-oh, it's going back down again. Maybe it'll go back down to 8 or 10, which it could easily do. This could easily go back down to even 4 or $5 to share where it was. So what you don't want to do is sit on it and hold it from 18 or 19 down to 10 or 5. I've done that kind of thing in the past and not happy with myself when I do. I like to scale out sooner, maybe at least half the trade if it starts to drop. What do you guys have here? You have 15, 15, 17, 7, 14, 15 and a half. A lot of you are saying 15, 50. Okay. Thanks, Chris, Steve, Phil, GB, Mira, Fernando, Damon, Ben, Doug, Gary, Steve. I've seen 15, 16, 17, 3, 17, 16, 15, 15, 8. All over the map. But it looks like 15 and a half ish has it. A 
why would you wait that far? I, I don't get it. I personally, some of you say, yeah, more like 17, right? If you're swing trading this, you don't give it any, how do I say? The number one strategy that I teach on swing trading, especially for stopping out uh, for positions if you're in and starting to drop is use a loss of a two-day chart. So why would you give it down to 15 and a half? If you're swing trading this, that's far too much money to give this thing. Let's say it'll probably gap down to 15 and a half on Monday. But let's say for argument's sake, it opens up near 18 on Monday and then starts to roll on down. Where would you, you would stop out no further than 17, right? Maybe 17.20. Remember to use the two day chart basis. You got two days of price action. If it gets under the second day by 40, 50 cents or so, uh, you call it quits on a swing trade. Always, always, uh, well, at least that's how I like to trade. Uh, I've had my most profitable days, weeks, and months, and years when I adopt my rules correctly. And so stopping out, and this is a good topic for the week here, two things. The first thing is what I just said. A stop out value on a swing trade should be no more than a dollar under the current two-day low. So no more down than, say, 1680 or so right 1680 would be a drop dead stop on this that would be a dollar under the close uh, under the low would be the, around 16 and a half but you would not give it down to i would start selling at say 1720 and it'd be all cash at 1650. now to the flip side of that argument is how do you scale in let's say the gaps up to 19 or something on monday and the market rallies and the market's coming back to life and it's going up and you don't want to all aboard, you don't want to miss the train. Where would you put on a new trade? Remembering my two day rule, where would be the earliest that you'd put on a new trade to go long in this APHA chart? You can apply this across all charts and all industries. It's, you may have seen my award winning articles in stocks and commodities. I had one on a brand new one called price projection day trading featuring a chart that one of my smart traders, Wendy, uh, mentioned in the room 3d where you look at patterns of repeat anyway where would you go along this guy Let's see 21 19 and a quarter 20 40 19 40 and back in at 19 and a quarter no personally i would not uh, you might want to start in again i never buy nines for swing trades so for those of you've been with me for 20 odd years you know we don't buy anything with a nine we sell nines so i wouldn't you could day trade it, say 19 and a quarter, uh, Fernando, that'd be fine. Yeah, day trade it, say 1940 or so would be my trigger on a day trade. But for a swing trade, you don't buy within a two day box. You always trade out days and out market trends. So, and you don't buy nine. So, an out day on this would be way up at 21 and a quarter. So, you'd be ultra skeptical. You don't go long unless it breaks above a two day high. Uh, and you scale out immediately if it starts to lose a two-day low support. It's You could day trade in this region, but for a swing trade, you've got to have a chart that looks a little more something like this. Now notice, please, this one is up at a two-day high. So we have permission. We have the blessing of the market to buy it if it's at a two-day high. And where I'd go long in this would be right over, say, 1220, right? Somewhere up at a two-day high basis point. And the stop loss on the two day chart would be down at say 10, somewhere under 1080, say 1060, 1050 or so. Now I cover that kind of strategy because what you really wanna do is get in on the very strongest directional strength trends and stay clear of and stop out as cheaply as possible on things that go against you. And as you're trying to develop a sensible rules-based trading approach for each week, uh, it makes sense to uh, only trade the strongest charts with the best Best odds of working out, right? Let's take a look at a little few more days here and then we'll wrap up in just around eight minutes. We use the two day rule, it really helps. And the neat thing about it is it's relatively simple. You buy above a two-day high, you sell beneath a two-day low. So 
Sometimes it helps gain clarity by looking at multi-day charts. Here's a seven-day chart. So you can see shorting the NASDAQ has made sense the last week or two. And you can see here we're not yet up at a 15 and a quarter, but a long trigger on this would not be at 14 and a half or 14.8. That'd be fine for a day trade, but for a swing trade, we'd want to really wait for it to get somewhere over that 15.20 level, right? That's our short NASDAQ play. Finance chart, though, uh, using this chart, we would have to wait for it to get over, say, five and a half, say, 560. The short Dow chart looks healthier, right? It's kind of perched for a breakout. So long anywhere over 1210, 1220 makes sense. So really, you know, you're trying to isolate which charts are most likely to attract new buyers uh, because the goal is to buy high and sell higher, or buy low and sell high, but at least sell it somewhere higher than what you paid for it. And so what we're looking for is which of these charts are most likely to stand the test of time and do that. Now, UVXY had an exciting day recovering the 10 uh, 52-week low that it traveled under uh, on Thursday, and it cycled briefly back up above 10, and then again yesterday and pulled back down. But as our VIX tends to be strong lately, uh, UVXY is also starting to light up. So UVXY up over 10. I'm going to uh, day trade it over 10. I'll swing trade it over 11. And if you look at relative strength in some of the other inverses, you want to see who's stronger. LABD is a compellingly strong case. And this is short the biotechs. And if you remember from when we looked at the NBI chart, it was down quite a bit. So the lab D is how to short biotechs. And again, the reason this chart isn't exciting to me, what's exciting to me is this chart. A lot of accumulative buying in this instrument off the lows here. One year high green volume was last Tuesday and you can see 6 million, just under 6 million shares volume. This is shorting biotechs. Now you can notice, please, back in March, this thing was split adjusted over 500 a share. Now on sale for the fire sale price, only $20 a share. Anyway, these kind of charts, very speculative. And uh, like uh, one of my trader, longtime traders, uh, Mira said, these are not to be held for months or anything. But if you do get a nice spike out of them during a market drop, which we may well get in March, you know, these are all worth uh, taking a look at. So. It's like semiconductor, right? And just taking a quick look at the pot stocks, if you look at, say, the canopy growth chart, these kind of charts that have what I call an acceleration ramp, kind of a steady uptrend. Whenever I speak of money show live events in Vegas or New York or, or wherever, or Texas, uh, I like these patterns. You get a steady uptrend does a 45 degree angle breakout, but then it didn't blow off top and exhaustion top up near 50 and has since been crashing back down. So we would sell this starting say loss of 32 and be all out of under 30. Now I'm interested, I'm still long a few shares of this guy, but where would you buy canopy growth? Uh, with one of the blue chip uh, cannabis sector instruments and it really did a nice run from 14 to 50. It's in sell mode now so I'm not going to touch it right now. It's, it may keep going down to 22 or something so I'm not going to buy it yet but a quick audience participation question for you. Where would you start initially trading canopy growth for a new rack of trades? And I always look at trades as a sequence of trades. I'm not going to buy 100 shares. I'll buy like five or ten shares and then if it keeps going up then I'll double down buy another 20, 10 shares, then double down again by another 20, then by 40, then 80. Kind of reverse martingale into the trade uh, if it goes in my favor. And if it doesn't, my initial five or 10 shares with a one or two dollar stop, it's not going to cost me really anything. Where'd you guys buy some canopy? Widely regarded as the the blue chip, uh, one of the better of the cannabis sectors and uh, cannabis instruments. I know uh, Kramer mentions it a lot, and he was right. It's a good call back. At, 20 and it ran up to 50. Now that it's in pullback mode, I'm not going to touch these unless we see a recovery. 
but I am keen on, this is one of my top sectors, this one, energy, silver and copper, and Bitcoin related stocks like Mara and Riot, which I trade, uh, and EBON, um, hot sectors. We're likely to see a sell off next week, and these are likely going to keep dropping, but at some point, there'll be <laughs> a good buy, and they'll start getting some buyers, they'll attract some buyers. How do we think ahead and put on a trade in this? So let's say this is the low, and it just kind of chops around next week. Starts to recover Thursday, Friday. Where are we going to go long? Hey, Gary. Gary's saying, I like the two-day high load of buying and stops. Yeah, test it out yourself. I do that hundreds of trades a week, live real money trades. Uh, I always scale in and scale out using the two-day rule as a barometer. Well, the other quick tip I was going to mention, by the way, we're almost out of time, is if we have a gap down, let's say Monday's a gap down and you're in stocks, you don't panic and sell pre-market or panic and sell at 9.30 on a gap down. I often give it, say, 15, 20 minutes, uh, and then if it keeps going down, okay, then I'll holler uncle and stop out. But you don't sell gaps down, and you usually don't want to buy gaps up because often they'll revert back into the range or at least a mean reversion pivot. So play it safe. Let's see, on the canopy growth entries, I've got 37, 36, between 38 and 40, 38, 34, above the gap around 36, close the down gap. Hey, Heidi, Steve, Wendy. Hey, Wendy. I want to say thanks, Wendy, for the 3D mention in the live room. I featured that in this month's article for Stocks and Commodities Magazine with the 10-point range. So we should have traded it, but at least it, it'll live on in posterity. So thank you for the, uh, I was thanking one of my live room members, Wendy, for mentioning 3D for us. I use that same exact chart or that same exact ticker in this month's issue of Stocks and Commodities Magazine article on price projection day trading. So thanks. It was a really good ticker in it. Hopefully it helps the world's traders with that article. Anyway, back to the answers here. I'm seeing 36, 37, 38. Yeah, somewhere over 36 makes sense. I'm fine with 37. 36 and a half, maybe 37 or so would be the first place to initiate a new trade. And again, that's above the weekly high, above the most recent two days price action high. Take a look at some of these charts. Again, the last time the S&P lost the 50 simple moving average line, it promptly recovered. So that's why I'm not, that's why I'm only long a few thousand dollars worth in versus maybe 3,000 or so. I'm not long, you know, 15, 20, 30,000 worth. I'm long small, mostly cash because last time we lost the 50 simple moving average in the S&P, it quickly bounced off of that and recovered. So uh, maybe this time is it and we crash and burn and get a gap down and it moves on down here. But last time, a few weeks ago, if you take a look at it, it bounced. So every time it's lost the 50 simple moving average line, that hasn't been a strong enough signal to move it down. If we get under, say, 3,700, that's the key line in the sand. I used to have 3,550, and that's also still a good short signal. But if we lose 3,700 next week, we're going to treat it as a maybe a bear trap region between, or at least I'm going to treat it as a bear trap region uh, between 30. 800 and 3,700, but if we get under 3,700 in the S&P, uh, which we may get Wednesday or Thursday or something, then watch out below. We may well get a crash down to the 200 SMA near 3,500. So, uh, and I'm not going to touch this market long next week for anything uh, because I doubt if we'll regain the 3,950 obvious resistance. Uh, I, from trading support, we can use 3,770 support, but for a uh, strategic short play, either buying puts in the indices or buying inverses or going short, uh, loss of 3,700 makes sense. And the last chart of the day to look at here is Tesla. I called it short at 794. I called the top, I think it was, I called the Tesla top on this day publicly here, right? I told you guys Tesla's in for a drop. It did actually bounce slightly above that briefly, but overall, 
my short call at 794 if anybody had paper traded shorted at 794 with a cover stop of 850 worked out for over well close to we're over 100 points now it's at 675 so Tesla would not be a value buy here, despite what I guess some hedge fund manager said. She bought a lot of Tesla. I think Tesla's going down. But most of us don't like to short things like that. So eyes on the price. Keep an eye on our, we're going to wrap up here right now. Uh, keep an eye on our inverses, especially dust, s -Dow. I put up the intraday chart here. All of these are good candidates for long plays if the market drops. So anyway, I wanted to thank all of you for being here and we're gonna, not now, we're gonna wrap up. And uh, if at no other time in your life you join my live room, <laughs> For this next week would be an especially good time because I'm especially good at trading inverse instruments and if the market continues to drop, I can walk you through those as well as whatever's hot on the day, whether it's our uh, Bitcoin plays like uh, Mara and Riot or Canopy, cannabis stocks like Canopy Growth and Tilray or energy and oil like uh, OXY and APA and whatever's out there or copper plays like FCX, right? I like to keep you on top of things. I also have the chart pattern ebook that just got published a couple of weeks ago that's included with the live room. So anyway, you guys stay safe out there. Wow, big turnout today. We always like to end on time. So here we are at our 12.30 East Coast time end. And thank you for being here, appreciate it. Hey, Shen, uh, was today's webinar recorded? It was, sir, and it will be on my Hey, thanks, Wendy, saying I should eat a steak. I agree. I, I miss ribeye steak. I haven't eaten steak in over a year. That's sad. I, I like a good bone and ribeye steak and garlic mashed potatoes and asparagus tips. And Oh, well, pandemic life. We don't get that. Anyway, but you can learn how to trade with me in my trading open live room. It's at trademastery.com forward slash live. And I look forward to working with you for more. And again, we give specific entry alerts and step-by-step -step walkthroughs for all educational trading alerts. So you get told ahead of time where the specific entry trigger was, like UVXY at $8.45, $8.45 was my long call on Thursday, right? So if you wanna learn with me, I look forward to working with you and take care and best wishes for success in the upcoming week ahead. You don't wanna trade these markets by yourself. Right? Really? I mean, good luck if you do, I certainly wish you the best, but uh, hopefully, uh, you can join the live room and learn more as you get my live calls and also those of all my members. Got a lot of smart people on board. So, all right, Glenn, with the side of lobster. Yeah, I like surf and turf. We don't have good lobster here in Colorado, but we got great steak. So, it's, a, it's something. Now I'm hungry. Anyway, hungry to make money too. So, looking forward to trading the week ahead. I'll be aggressively trading inverses if we drop. And if we bounce, I'll be playing. Bitcoin stocks like Riot and Mara, and our cannabis stocks like uh, Canopy Growth and Tilray. So take care and best wishes.